Head over to MiniatureMarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. The Goonies Never Say Die is a one versus many game where many of you will be Goonies like Mikey working together. And making up your team with maybe Data, Sloth, Chunk, and maybe even Mouth. And you're all playing against a single human player known as the Goondocks Master. And they're trying to make this time completely vanish at the beginning of one of their rounds they'll win. The game has nine different adventures that you'll play and you can replay all of them where the Goonies are going to be moving around, exploring new rooms, fighting foes, searching rooms, finding secret passageways. They'll also be using special abilities like Data's cool inventions and using different dice for different tests of strength, dexterity, and search and being able to upgrade or even get help from your teammates in order to have more successes. But the GM has the adventure guide and knows what you're going to find and is able to manipulate the game. And they also have their own deck of cards that changes from adventure to adventure and allows them to play cards for strategic reasons at different times of play like reacting to the Goonies or doing things on their specific turn. So can you work well enough together as Goonies to defeat the Goondocks Master? Let's find out. The Goonies is a one versus many game that has fantastic art, amazing theme, great production for an MSRP of $35. I like that the Goonies are all helping each other out, giving each other things, spending wishes to upgrade dice, uh, going in whatever order they want. Uh, I like that there's certain things that will trigger secrets and certain things will happen based upon how successful you are at other things. I like the simple but interesting skill check system of rolling the dice. They get good, better, best, and you can upgrade the dice. Uh, your real goal needs to be found during the adventure, and then you figure out what you're really supposed to try to do. So overall, for a, a sort of light mass market thing, it's, it's I think it is uh, the people that are in the, the market for that style of game are going to like this. Uh, on the negative side of things, I've only played once. This is sort of first impressions, but I hope that it gets more difficult for the Goonies, a little bit more balanced as the GM, because the first introductory, the first scenario was sort of a little easy. Uh, and I wish they would have had some more like choose your own adventure style things when the secrets came out. But overall, if you go into it knowing it's a light game, uh, an adventure style one versus many, I think you'll set your expectations just fine for this one. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're diving into the Goonies world, trying to get away from the Fratellis, trying to find One-Eyed Willie's treasure. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at Goonies Never Say Die. This is a board game from uh, Funko Games. It's a Target exclusive. Let me show you, this is a one versus many, where one player is gonna be sort of running the game but still playing against the other players who are the Goonies. Let me show you how it works. I'll see you on the other side. The Goonies Never Say Die is a one versus many game where many of you will be Goonies like Mikey working together. Now the team that's playing together will each select their own Goonie. You could choose from Sloth and Mikey and Chunk and Data and even Mouth there. So everyone will get one Goonie to be. Now when you select your Goonie, you'll also get a really cool miniature that you'll use to move around the board. Now each Goonie also comes with its little player aid here. It shows the health, how many wishes, the different strength, dexterity, and search. Uh, tests and which dice they'll use for those. They'll have some special abilities and some of the Goonies like Data has some cards that they can use throughout the game as actions to do special things. Those are all his cool gadgets. Now those Goonies are working together will all win or lose together but they're playing against a single player known as the Goondocks Master and they will sit on the other side of the board and they'll be doing some things behind the screen over there. They'll be basically playing against all the other players. And on the other side of that screen is a really good player aid about how the rounds work because they're going to be the ones sort of running the game. Now the game is played over nine different adventures and you'll play through these different in order and you can put the game away between adventures and you can replay adventures as often as you like, uh, but you'll go through nine different ones. Now only the player playing the Goondocks Master, known as the GM, will look at this book and it gives a good uh, idea of like how to play as this, how to use this guide, but then I'm not going to show anything else because everything after this page is are essentially secrets and spoilers. 
Now here's the board that's used in the game, and it's very modular because the GM is going to be setting it up in different ways depending on the adventure. And there's going to be a specific starting spot where they're going to start, and they'll only show you sort of what's in that room and if there's any connections to other rooms. And this will show you that, hey, you could search this room if you get there. Now, at the beginning of each adventure, the Goonies will know what their sort of starting goal is. For example, maybe to find your way through the caves in search of legendary treasure and see if you can get your wish. But as you go through the game, you'll actually find out what your real objective is to win. Now, the game is played over multiple rounds. The Goonies will play a round, where all the Goonies will go, and then the GM will play a round. Now, at the beginning of the GM's round, uh, if this sand is all on the bottom, then the GM will win, because certain effects that I'll talk about later will move this sand, basically running out of time. The Goonies are trying to find what their goal is for the adventure and finish it before they run out of time, and the GM is going to be trying to push this forward. Now, during the Goonies round, uh, they're each going to be able to take a turn and they can decide what order they do it, and the order can change each round. And the Goonies can do different things on their turn. One of the things is they could take up to two actions. Now, one of the things you could do is search. Some of the tokens will have this icon on it, and those are different types of tokens, but if they have this on there, you can try to search. Now, search is a type of test. We have strength, dexterity, and search. And each of the Goonies have different stats for these. There's three types of dice there is the red. There's the blue and there's the green. Now the red is a six-sided die, this is an eight, and this is a 12-sided uh, die. And essentially, bones are successes, and the red dice have the least amount of chances of success. The eight-sided die is better, but not the best, and this is the best. And so he's not very good at strength, but he's pretty good at both dexterity and search. Where conversely, sloth is the best at strength, but not very good at dexterity and search. And Mikey, for example, is the best at searching, and then he's pretty good at dexterity and not very good at strength. So they all differ slightly. Now, when doing a test, now in this case, search, I would use two blue dice. Now, you can spend a wish. Everyone starts with these, and it shows you your maximum at the beginning of the round. Plus, at, in all the rounds except the first, each Goonie gets a wish. Uh, and at the end of the, your round, you, you know, you have to make sure you have no more than that. But you can spend a wish in many different ways. One of the things you could spend to upgrade one of these dice. So I could upgrade the blue one to a green one, giving me more chances of success. Also, another Goonie could spend a wish to give them one of the dice that they have. For example, Mikey could have spent one of his four wishes and given you, since it's a search, he would give you a green dice. Now, you can never roll more than three dice, but now you have a, a, a pretty good dice and two awesome dice and you'd roll them. Now, this is way overkill for a search because we actually have one, two, three, four successes. Now, if you roll one of these, it's actually gonna help the game master, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Now, when searching, regardless of that result, you always get one item card, and this would allow you to do different things, like a one-time use, rock and tune, discard to take an additional action, or maybe it might be my wish, discard to gain two wish tokens. So you'll get one of those regardless of what happens. Now, if you've got at least two successes on that search, you'd get a treasure card, and these do different things, like the silver spyglass. Whenever you explore a new room, gain two wish tokens. Or maybe it's a merfolk trident, and this is used as an action. For one of your two actions, you can play that card and roll one of those best green dice. For each success, you deal a damage to each foe in your room because there's gonna be different foes that you'll be fighting over the course of the game. And unlike the item cards that get discarded after you use, these ones don't. And over the course of the game, you might find some legendary treasures, but I'm not gonna show you any of those. And once you search this, it would be removed, for example. Now, another thing you could do uh, is move. And there, right now, there's just one passageway here. And so you would essentially move. So let's say we sort of moved into here. And this shows the, the GM that there needs to be, you know, that this is just being explored here. And keep in mind that sometimes little passages will be dangerous and you'll have to do a dexterity check to get over those. Sometimes you'll find secret passages after you explore a room to some other rooms and things like that. So once you get into a room like this, they'll take that off and they will set it up. Now, this isn't exactly how this adventure sets up, but sometimes you might have a foe. Like in this case, it's a giant rat. It shows the health of four there. And there's all different types of foes that you might find. And each of those foes have a card that tells you the health. They'll be tracking damage here. It also shows you what dice that they use when they attack two red ones, which aren't the best dice. Now, you're only able to do two actions on your turn, but I'm just showing you all the different things you could do. You could attack by rolling, in this case, your two strength. Remember, you can upgrade and get some help from other, other people as well. Of course, keeping in mind that teamwork, they have to be in the same room as you. And let's say you rolled, and let's say you had two successes, and you'd put the damage here, knowing that it needs four. And if this ever moved outside, this would go with it. And if you ever end up defeating a foe, you'd actually get a wish token. And once you're done, you'll actually flip this over to let you know you're, you're done, and then you can pick the next Goonie to go. Now, after it gets back to the Goonies round again, the first thing players will do is flip all these over and they'll gain a wish. Once all the Goonies have taken their turns, it goes to the GM round. And first thing they'll do is they'll gain one of these GM tokens. Think of them as 
it's kind of like the wish tokens, but for the GMs, they help them do different things that we'll talk about in just a moment. Then it would then activate foes on the board. And each foe, they'll be able to possibly move, and they can move to an adjacent room, assuming that there's a connection there. Uh, or, and then all foes may then possibly attack. And they're going to attack if they're if it's in here. It'll, it'll bas they'll basically decide which goonie they're attacking. So like in this case, the giant rat would attack with the two red dice, but much like the goonies can, they can discard one of his GM tokens to upgrade that to the next better die, for example. Remember that anytime one of these is rolled, either by you or the goonies, you'll get one of these, which is going to continue to help you out throughout the game. And again, for each success you have there, it's going to do a damage to the Goonie. The damage is tracked by putting this on the play card. However, they can spend uh, a wish to defend it. And they can prevent any number of damage as long as they have enough wish tokens to do so. However, let's say uh, Data has gotten as much damage as his health. And the GM is going to take one of these sand and move it to the bottom. Now again, at the beginning of the GM round, if this is ever full, then the GM will win. Now, it's not the end of the world because there's actually some teenager cards that will help the Goonies throughout the game. Like, uh, you could flip face down to add a green to a dexterity check or a green to a search or a green to a strength. And when you use this, you flip it over. And when this happens to somebody and the GM gets to put that sand timer, you have to flip one of these over, sort of re, you know, re, uh, you know, enabling it. Now, at, at the end of the GM's round, you will be able to clear that damage and sort of start over. Now, after you activate the foes, the GM would draw a GM card and he could spend another one and they used to draw another card if they want to. Now, he starts with two. Now, there's a deck, a basic deck, and then each adventure is going to have new cards that get mixed in and shuffled in here. So they're going to have different options throughout the different adventures. And these will then, you know, the, the GM can play one card. And again, they could spend one of these to play an additional card. So these are used to not only, uh, you know, draw cards, extra cards, but also play extra cards as well as upgrading dice. And they could change and play this like on the GM's turn, they play this and each Goonie must discard a wish token. Or if a Goonie has no wish tokens, do an end night roll. And that's when that's these cards here, they allow you to do a success roll uh, or, or a test roll, which essentially is using three of the red dice. And if they get two success or more, well, they'd be able to move one of these timers down. It's a big thing, but there's not that many of those types of cards in, his, in the deck. And of course, to have used this, a Goonie would have had to have no wish tokens, or they would have had to spend two GM tokens to do that. Also, some cards might react, like after Goonie rolls dice, game two GM tokens for each GM symbol rolled instead of one. So that's pretty much it. That's how the GM works, and after them, then you'll start another Goonies round. Now, in addition to some of the standees that the GM will use, they'll also use some cool minis at certain parts of the game as well. And again, if at the beginning of a GM's round, this is full, the GM wins. Otherwise, if the Goonies figure out what their goal is and complete it before this happens, then the Goonies win. All right, now this is just a first impressions because I played just the first adventure. I played it as the GM. And so mostly this video is to give you an overview, which I just gave you, and then give, just give you some of my sort of first impressions and my hopes for what some of the other scenarios will do. Uh, I was a huge fan of the Goonie movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's just one of the best timeless movies. Uh, and I love that. I love the whole, everything about it. Now this has fantastic art and great theme. There's not a lot of Goonies games out there and there aren't really, there's been a few of them, but there none of them have been very good. So in Funko Games and Prospero Hall, who's the design group who did this, have been known to do some very popular style games, but do them with a good game design. So and this has the great art and the great theme. Uh, this game is great production for retail, MSRP of $35. I mean, you're getting miniatures, you're getting all the cards, you're getting all these tokens. It's, it's a great price point MSRP to have a game like this. I think it's going to do really well like that. Now, the Goonies, this is sort of semi-cooperative, right? So the Goonies are helping each other out, and I like that aspect because they they get to decide who, you know, what order the players go. They're talking about what we should do. They're, when they're in the same rooms, they can, you know, give each other things. They can, uh, you know, they can help give them, by spending a, a wish, they can you know, give them the good die that the other player needs in a certain test and such. So I like that it is sort of semi-cooperative, that, that one side is sort of working together there. Uh, certain secrets trigger based on, you know, what the Goonies do. There's certain times where like, hey, if this happens, hey, the DM's supposed to read this and something else might happen. And I think that's cool that, uh, that, 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 that different things may happen depending on the choices that they make. Uh, it has a simple but interesting skill check system. I mean, it's pretty easy. You're just going to roll dice, but being able to upgrade dice to spend wishes in order to do so, or again, getting help from other players. It's just like, hey, red's the worst, blue's second, green's the best. Uh, and it's pretty simple, but it works very well, I think, for this sort of lighter mass market game. 
I like that you get an introduction and you you know what you're trying to do as the Goonies, but you don't really know your real goal until you get far enough into the adventure. And it's like, oh, okay, now we got to do this. Let's now we know what we got to do. And so you you kind of figure that out as the adventure goes on. Uh, so overall, if I think if you you know again, I've only just played one of the scenarios of the nine, and this is a mass market game. It's 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 light. If 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 you're into those sort of adventure style dice rolling games, and uh, you're looking for something that's that's you know from an intellectual property standpoint is something like the Goonies that's really cool, but you're looking for something that is still has something there to, to grasp onto, even though it's mass market. As these mass market games are getting better and better, and Prospero Hall and Funko Games are a tag team that has been bringing some of the best part of these games to to this. So this whole this whole niche there. So it is it is a mass market. You're not going to find Gloomhaven here. You know you're not going to find a lot of really huge deep things. But it is supposed to be, you know, very approachable, and I think they they hit the mark with that. Uh, any things that I hope for for the the, the future scenarios? Because this isn't really a review, because I've really just played it once as the DM. And so uh, one thing I find odd is that the start spot is typically closer to the to to the uh, sorry the GM uh, the GM. And it, it's kind of odd that usually most of the times things start closer to the people, the majority of the players. And so that was a little odd to me. That was just a little nitpick. I hope it gets more balanced as it gets towards the you know the later scenarios because the first one it really felt like sort of like an introduction introductory scenario it still took you know close to an hour anyway so time wise it wasn't that introductory uh but it you know it felt pretty easy for the goonies to get away with the win uh with you know they, those wish tokens just being able to spend those freely to to avoid damage uh you know and things like that it just and and, and the the monsters weren't that hard for them, so it did seem sort of weighted towards the Goonies because they, you know, they probably want you to have a, a good experience for the majority of the players, and the GM's really there to sort of facilitate the game, and hopefully they can win. But it seemed like it was going to be a far, far stretch for them to win that first one. So I hope it gets a little bit more balanced, a little bit harder for the Goonies as the scenarios go on. Uh, I also would have loved to have seen sort of. Uh, I did look for, look ahead a little bit to see if there's any sort of aspects. There's a lot of secrets that come out, you know, and and. Uh, so things that happen depending on what you do, but I'd love to have seen things like, hey, when you do the skill check, if you get this many, this happens. If you get this many, this happens. If you get this many, this happens. And having some different things or choices of like, hey, this just happened. Do you want to do this? Or you want to do this? And then based upon that, I would have liked to have seen them sort of weave some sort of story-driven, uh, you know, choose your own adventure style stuff into this. Uh, but overall, I think if you're looking for that sort of very sort of lightish uh, mass market game with a great theme, one versus many. Uh, definitely want to check out. I'm going to be doing another video, hopefully, uh, as the game goes. Now, this game is exclusive at Target till the end of the year. And right now, their pre-orders are sold out. Uh, they're supposed to be reopening those up about mid-July. So around that time frame, hopefully, I would have played more scenarios and I can do like a full review. Or maybe I'll do like sort of like a playthrough or so some other content for it as it gets closer. Uh, this has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games, and helping you find the next one you love. Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table to a high quality gaming solution, they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with their amazing thematic premium stitch edge mats from noted board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and really cool accessories, it's a complete system that upgrades every game you play. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below.